one victim, one in the chest and leg. We're going to load him and take him right away. We have one other victim that is down Gray Mercy Street, uh, unable to get contact with him. Uh, PD's making his way to them. STEM school in Douglas County closed this morning as the community tries to cope with a truly incredible loss. One student has been killed, eight others hurt after two people opened fire inside of the STEM school in Highlands Ranch. And right now, we're getting ready for that news conference with Douglas County officials. So the public school is on Ridgeline Boulevard near C-470, just about five miles from Columbine High School. It's three schools there on the same campus, grades as we mentioned a moment ago, kindergarten, through the 12th grade. And uh, it looks as if that press conference is about to get started as we see people walking to the podium. Let's check in live. This and you guys can fill in over here next to the under sheriff as well. All right, we got everyone. Looks like they're just getting ready to speak. You see there in the middle, Douglas County Sheriff Tony Spurlock. There's $150,000. All right, are you guys ready? Um, good morning, my name is Deputy Kosha Hyden, C-O-C-H-A-H-E-Y-D-E-N. I am the Public Information Officer for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Uh, this morning we are going to have a press conference in relation to the shooting at STEM School, which occurred yesterday. I'm going to briefly uh, let you know who we have um, behind us and then let you know who is going to speak and who is going to answer questions. First, we have uh, Sheriff Tony Spurlock, then we have DA George Brockler, Governor Jared Polis. Those are the three people that will be speaking. They will um, make a statement and answer a few questions after each one. We also have up here Under Sheriff Holly Nicholson Cluth, uh, Chief uh, State Patrol Chief uh, Matt Packard, Director, Director of Homeland Security Kevin Klein, Director of Public Safety Stan Hilke, uh, Superintendent Thomas Tucker from the school district, as well as from the school district, executive director from STEM School Highlands Ranch, Penny Euchre. Again, uh, Sheriff will speak first, answer a few questions. We'll turn it over to DA George Brockler, who will answer a few questions. Um, and then we will finish up with uh, Governor Jared Polis, who will answer a few questions. Um, if we can make sure that when you ask a question, we're gonna have the Sheriff kind of restate that. Um, if you have any problems hearing anything, just flag us down. That way we can make sure um, everyone hears it. I will turn it over to Sheriff Tony, Tony Spurlock. Thank you, Kosha. Um, thank you all for being here. I, f I first want to um, speak to the community of, of Douglas County and those um, kids that were at the STEM school uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, uh, our hearts um, are hurting uh, for them and you know I ask the community to uh, come together as we always do here in Douglas County and be strong <clears throat> excuse me and uh, and pray for the family of the child that was lost and the other eight who are injured and still suffering from their injuries and then the other remaining almost 1800 kids that were at the school um, that uh, had to uh, be a part of this um, uh, terrible tragedy. So I, I asked first the community to do that and I, and I thank the media to uh, helping me uh, share that information. What I want to do just very quickly now is go through just some uh, very quick uh, things that happened yesterday and some new updates and information. You know, yesterday, a little before two o'clock, the STEM school uh, notified law enforcement of an active shooter in their school. Uh, officers responded. As you know, that the STEM school is uh, less than a, probably about a mile from this substation. Uh, officers from this substation, detectives and command officers responded. But we had officers on the street that were there uh, with uh, inside two minutes. Um, once at the school, they immediately engaged the suspects and started to uh, rescue the, the children that were injured. Uh, we have um, an, an adult male that we sent out information on yesterday in custody uh, at the Douglas County Jail. 
Um, we originally uh, thought that we had a juvenile male in custody, but through our interviews yesterday late afternoon, um, determined that we have a juvenile female uh, that is in custody right now who is the other suspect. All of the victims that were shot have been released except for three, three uh, children that are still in intensive care and uh, at uh, area hospitals. We are still actively working the crime scene with our partners from the FBI. We anticipate that that's probably going to take at least uh, two more days uh, for us to, to manage that. Um, I want to just make sure that we um, uh, focus on the um, the, the families and the kids at the school, at the STEM school. Uh, as you can see, we have the superintendent of schools here and um, the leadership from the STEM school. We've been working very closely with them since this incident and trying to uh, do whatever we can to help the kids. Uh, Friday will be the last day for the seniors. And so we're, we're obviously working very closely to get them a location and assist them um, for those children can return to school and finish their education um, for this season. Um, that is all the information we have. I will say a couple, I'm sorry, there's a couple more things. Uh, I apologize and I think the district attorney may speak about it. We will have a hearing today and uh, George will be president of that at 1.30 and that will be the first appearance for the adult male. And uh, George will share a little bit more information about that. The um, all of the other information that we have. We know that a lot of you have uh, developed information in regards to the, the deceased um, child. We have not gotten a positive from the Douglas County coroner who has the legal authority and responsibility of releasing that person's name. Uh, we have contacted family members but we are not releasing that child's name until uh, the coroner has positively done what is required by law for the coroner to do that. We will push that information out um, after two o'clock today, and I do not anticipate that we will have any other press release information until tomorrow once we have some more information in regards to our crime scene. You can imagine that it is a, is a very extensive crime scene, and we have asked uh, the assistance of the FBI to, to help us um, work in every location where a crime was committed inside that school by the two suspects. So I want to turn it over uh, quickly to uh, District Attorney George Brockler, and then um, and he'll turn it over to the governor, and then we'll answer a few questions. George. Good morning. Uh, my name is George Brockler. Last name is spelled B-R-A-U-C-H-L-E-R. -E I'm the district attorney for Colorado's 18th Judicial District. That is a judicial district that has four counties in it. Arapahoe, Douglas, which is the one we're in right now, Elbert, and Lincoln. I live in Douglas County, and for about 18 years I lived less than half a mile from where this incident took place. And I'm going to talk to you as the DA, but um, I want to begin by talking to you as the DAD, as the dad. I got four kids in this school system. My wife's business is less than a mile from here. I grew up in these parts. And if you had suggested to anyone behind me or in this room that within 20 years and 20 miles, we would have dealt with Columbine, Aurora Theater, Arapahoe High School, the shooting of Zach Parrish and four other deputies, we'd have thought you mad, and yet here we are again. My heart goes out, not just to the victims in this case, but there are those that won't be classified as victims that are feeling it this morning right now. Moms and dads looking at each other, making decisions about whether or not to send their kids to school in one of the greatest school districts in the country because they don't feel safe. That's the dad talking to you. We're having those conversations at home, too. Now, as the district attorney, I tell you procedurally, we do have a hearing this afternoon at 1.30. That hearing is an advisement. It is going to take place at this time with the adult suspect. I want to make it clear, too, that no matter how much information is given out by law enforcement or is confirmed by other sources or you develop on your own, that for this system to work, 
those people have to be presumed innocent, including the individual that the sheriff's office released the name for yesterday, have to be presumed innocent for this system to work. And that's how we'll conduct ourselves. Now at 1.30, this is a person who will be brought in, advised, given a preliminary advisement, there will be an attorney assigned or hired. There is going to be an additional date set after that, and we can have conversations after court at 1.30 to discuss procedurally what takes place after that. Now, there's also the juvenile suspect who is equally presumed innocent. In our state, as in just about every other, we have two tracks for adults and juveniles at this point in the process. I cannot tell you for certain that that juvenile will be advised today at 1.30. Um, if we know more about that information before, then of course we're going to let you know all that. A couple favors I want to ask of you, and we are too familiar with this process. The name of the adult suspect has been released. There are probably photographs out there now and there will be additional ones in the future. The juvenile at some point will likely become known. My request to you as someone who has been in this game too long and dealt with cases of this high profile nature too often is to adopt a no notoriety approach. I know that you have an obligation to report the name, the identity. I know you have the obligation to put out a picture, but soon, very soon, let us move past focusing on the identity of the suspects and their images and focus instead on the innocent victims and on this crime and the investigation itself. Thank you. Oh, it's my privilege right now to introduce to you the governor of the state of Colorado, Governor Jared Polis. Well, I want to thank uh, Sheriff Spurlock, Colorado Public Safety Director Stan Hilke, the FBI, and even more importantly, uh, all of the first responders uh, on the line, police, medical, ambulances, the school staff, uh, parental reunification team. Uh, really, a lot of people stepped up to this crisis uh, to manage it competently and effectively. Um, everyone really came together and now it's time for the community to come together in Douglas County across Colorado and our community across the country to support uh, the parents and families impacted. You know the past 24 hours have been very difficult uh, for Douglas County, for Colorado. Uh, we learned that a student's life was taken too soon by this vicious act of violence. Uh, you know, as the father of two young children, I can hardly even imagine the horror and the grief that the families must be feeling. And of course, uh, our prayers are for the complete recovery of the remaining victims. Truly, the heart of all Coloradans goes out to those affected in the school community uh, here and elsewhere. You know, I think at this point, Coloradans are really heartbroken, frustrated, still shocked and, and frankly sick over uh, a mass shooting occurring right here in Douglas County. You know, schools should really be places where students can learn and grow, safe places, uh, and we shouldn't have to worry about being marched out or having being airlifted to hospitals or even losing one's life uh, in a place that's supposed to be a safe place for all students. Uh, at this point, you know, as governor, I share the heartbreak, the frustration, the sickness that families here at STEM feel, families in Douglas County, and families across Colorado. Uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to our first responders and the men and women uh, who responded quickly uh, to prevent an even worse tragedy from unfolding. You know, time and time again, Coloradans have proven how resilient we are and this time is no different. Yes, we come together in grief. We also come together to heal, and we come together to figure out what we can do better as a state and as a society. Thank you. We'll take a few questions if you have for uh, either the governor or the district attorney or myself. Sure, I'm sorry, Tony. taken away from sure. one of the houses last night. Yeah, there was a car uh, that was taken and uh, seized as evidence at one of the crime scene uh, locations, not one of the crime scene locations, but one of the locations where uh, the suspects uh, reside. 
that uh, is still being under investigation. The graffiti on it um, is still being analyzed at this point, so I don't have any specific um, uh, information on what it, man, what it means or where it came from. Let me get with you. Sure. Can you explain at all what the confusion was about the juvenile suspects? Yes, we, well, I can tell you it was very confusing um, uh, situation. We were, uh, had a number of officers in a school where shots were being fired and the officers were trying to recover uh, victims. Um, we identified who the suspects were. They were taken into custody. And at the time, um, the, uh, the individuals that we believed were in custody were two males. It wasn't until we got to this office where we were able to determine that um, uh, one of the uh, suspects was a female. You have to understand that this individual is a young person. Uh, this individual is a small young person, and uh, the identity wasn't uh, definitive, obviously, obvious to us when they were taken into custody. And then I was shared that information and didn't have anything further when I made my first uh, press release. Can you, can you tell us how you were able to identify the, the suspects, and what do you know about the motive you know, I'm going to share information about the motive at this point right now. It's too new. We're only less than 18 hours into this case, and we're still working towards a motive. Um, how we identified the uh, suspects is through um, basic uh, police work and, and um, uh, assistance from the uh, school district. You mentioned another kind of interaction between um, the young person who died uh, and the um, suspects or other students who were in the room and the suspects? The, um, unfortunately, the deceased student, um, I don't have any particulars about any interaction other than the fact that the person was shot by a suspect. Um, we do know that there were students, and we are going to hear about very heroic things that have taken place um, at the school. We do know that there were, um, there was at least one that we can verify the student that in, encountered the suspects. And I suspect that as the detectives get further interviews from them, we are going to find that there were much more uh, heroic things. We watched on video uh, some of the things that our deputies had done in regards to uh, uh, rush in and uh, to take the kids out and run them um, 100 yards to the closest ambulance. So there was a lot of those things happening throughout the school with uh, employees of the school, other students, and, and staff. So that we're too early to even clarify anymore. more. Do you mention that specific about encountered? Do you mean that they might have um, somehow tackled them, that I, them? I'm using, she wants to know of, uh, the word encountered. I'm using encountered because that's the best word I can come up with right now of, of the, their engagement, uh, so I can't uh, I, I can't break that down any further for you. I'm sorry. There's only one crime scene, and that's a STEM school. We have search warrants for the suspects' homes, as would be common practice, or any cars that they have access to. Um, so. As I said before in the, 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 the first briefing, we, these children went to that school. Um, the suspects went to the school. They were able to get deep inside the school. Um, that's the only thing that I can share at this point in regards to the, the crime scene. Sure. Did the student that, that passed away, did that happen inside the school, or is that at one of the hospitals? No, that, sh that, that's, that child died at the school. Sure. you talked about talked about having some video that you've already reviewed. Can you tell us anything about how these suspects were apprehended? They obviously weren't in, were, I, don't, I don't know, were they injured in, how did they get taken down? Okay, they, I, I can't, they were not injured at this point. Um, I can't tell you the specifics on, on how they were arrested other than they were taken into custody um, and they were uh, removed from the school by uh, my deputies. Um, other than that, I can say that we did not exchange any gunfire with them. Um, I can tell you at that point, uh, other than that, I, I can't share anything else. Were they already restrained by the time your deputies, deputies got there? I believe one of them was restrained when the deputies uh, uh, came in contact with them. And was that by students? 
No, no, that was uh, by the security officer that was at the school. Sure. How many weapons were involved and how did they get them into the school? Again, uh, as I said before in it, we know that pistols were used in this assault. Um, the number of weapons that were uh, at the school and how they got in, um, we're not releasing because that's subject to the prosecution case. Sure. So there was more than one guy? So you just mentioned just one handgun? Yeah, there was two handguns. I'll tell you that at this point. Sure. Were, were the two shooters together when the first shots rang out, or were they in separate places inside the school? That, that, I, cannot, I, uh, that I, can't tell, I can't answer that question. Were I'm sorry. Were they apprehended together? They were not apprehended together. Sure. Are there metal detectors at the school? Or there are not metal detectors at that school. Sure, but the new red flag laws, do you think these laws could have prevented this from happening? And also, what do you think we could do with schools since there's been so many school shootings, what could have prevented this from happening? Uh, he asked about the red flag, or red flag law with that of uh, assisted law enforcement and what could we do to prevent other school shootings. Um, as you know, the red flag law requires a tremendous amount of information and intelligence gathering uh, before anyone is subject to an ERPO. And these are uh, these suspects are young adults or juveniles, so their ability to um, create a criminal history is kind of minimal uh, because of that. So uh, at this point right now, I would say that um, there there isn't any particular information at this point, neither one of them were of legal age to own or purchase a gun anyway, so it's a moot point in regards to red flag. Uh, one of the things that we can do to help our children and keep our schools safe, and that is working together with your school district, local law enforcement, and the, in the, in the government um, that assists all of those and educating our children, edu educating our community, uh, see something, say something at a school. Uh, those are the kinds of things that we can do, educate our children, and if they see something or hear something, we have a great program in Douglas County, Text to Tip. There's a state program, Safe to Tell. Um, those two programs work wonderfully in the state of Colorado every day that you folks don't even know about, that we uh, avert disasters and tragedies because children's. Mountain Vista was one of them where we were able to, to do that, and, and uh, individuals were arrested and charged for that. Do you have any reason to believe these individuals were supported or directed by anybody else at this point in the investigation, and where did they get involved? Uh, too, too early to tell at this point. The ATF is assisting us on the location of the purchase of those guns. Sheriff, sure. can you tell us um, if there were any warnings about the shooting via social media or other ones? Um, that is too early for us to tell. We are deep in... Um, all of the social media searches, computers, phones, all those that kind of stuff, and interviewing. You have to understand, again, there are 1,800 children at that school. About 600 of them were probably most definitively affected by it um, because of the pod that it was at. So uh, we're only 18 hours into this. That's a lot of kids to interview, and we still have a lot more to interview. Are the suspects cooperating? Are they talking to you? Are they uh, I can't share that information at this point. Sir, is there any, any future plans to have schools implement a security system where metal detectors are going to be installed? Okay, I, I can't. He wanted to know if there was any future plans of putting metal detectors in the schools. Uh, we work very closely with the school district. As you can see, we have uh, their leadership up here, and we strive every day to try to find ways to protect our children while they're in schools here in Douglas County and still have an environment of appropriate and appropriate um, education. So we're still working on that, but I don't have anything particularly. We're going to do a few more questions. Anyone in the back, we've been beating these guys up front up. Yes, that uh, student was going to graduate and uh, would have been out of school in three days. Do you know which, which suspect fired the bullet that killed the student who passed away? No, I don't, and we had a question for the governor. Governor Polis, once again, the nation's eyes are on Colorado and in a very negative way right now. Can you add perspective your concern on, on what this says about our state? Um, we heard about fire shootings. We all know about fire shootings. What do you say to the people that are looking at Colorado right now and saying we have a problem? Well, we've been no stranger to, to tragedy. Uh, it was just a, a couple weeks ago that we observed the 20th anniversary of the Columbine shooting uh, with the solemn ceremony 
uh, but also a focus from the survivors now in their 30s, their families. Uh, great to see that many of the Columbine survivors had kids and families of their own. And they dedicated uh, that anniversary to a day of service, uh, giving back to their community, building upon the tragedy that they experienced. So too, in this tragedy, uh, families will come together to support those directly affected. Uh, we are a resilient state, uh, whether it's in the face of fire, floods, or a human tragedy of senseless violence like this. Uh, Coloradans really come together uh, and show support for the kids and families affected uh, as we make sure that uh, we know that uh, we can do a better job and, and, and help make sure the kids are safe uh, in schools in our state uh, and, and across the nation. Uh, you know, America has seen too many of these senseless acts of violence. And there's, you know, a discussion, of course, to be had about what we can do to make sure kids are safe at school. Um, today, uh, obviously, with less than 24 hours after the tragedy, uh, it's really about the outpouring of support uh, from all sectors uh, for the families directly affected and, of course, our hopes that the remaining victims who are hospitalized fully recover. Tony, can I say something about that? Because this is my home. This is not who we are. And my concern is, as this thing gets reported outside the borders of this state and across the country because of the things we've talked about, this becomes how people view us. This is not who we are. We are exactly what the governor said. We are a resilient people, but the time for resilience isn't going to be within the first 24 hours of this. We're going to mourn. We're going to weep. We're going to take care of those who are down and pick ourselves back up. But who we are is we are a kind, compassionate, caring people. And this does not define us. It won't today and it won't tomorrow. These are aberrant acts. Problem is, when you get three, four, or five of them within a 20-mile radius, you begin to think they're less aberrant. But I'm here to tell you this is not who we are. Our school district is awesome. Our school district is safe. And my kids are going to go to school today, and I recommend everyone else send their kids to school, too. Uh, I'm going to go right here. Can so you please repeat that question? Uh, what, 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 why does it happen in this community? Yeah. Una cosa como eso puede pasar en cualquier lugar en nuestro estado o nuestro país, pero hoy, eh, ayer, uh, lo, lo pasé aquí en Douglas County. Y nuestros corazones están con uh, las personas aquí en Douglas County y también uh, queremos uh, para todos uh, los niños um, uh, mejorar sus condiciones y uh, regresar y los otros niños regresar a escuela seguros uh, sin, sin uh, la, la necesidad de, de, de pasar más tiempo um, sin, uh, sin, sin dudas. Yeah, it's a fair question, and it's something that we're going to explore. We've made no decisions at this point, and I should, you brought up the charges. Let's talk about things that will become publicly available. You will see charges at some point referenced in court or an affidavit early on. Uh, those are not the official charges that will ultimately necessarily be filed a few days from now, but they are the initial charges upon which the adult is booked as to what we'll do with the juvenile. I'm going to continue to wait and see what the investigation reveals. I want to make a smart decision about that, and I won't be rushed into it. Sheriff, where did the suspects enter the school? <coughs> Excuse me, I want to know where the suspects entered the school. They entered through the um, middle school uh, entrance, which is the north east side of the STEM school. And are there metal detectors at that entrance? No, there are no metal detectors at that location. Sheriff, can you talk a little bit more about the security officer? You said, I think, yesterday that was not a, they do not have a school resource officer. Is this somebody who is armed? Is this somebody who is just kind of there monitoring? Who is this person? So this school does not have an SRO, but the STEM school uh, contracted with a private company for security, armed security officer at that school, and that individual's job was just that. 
Um, again, uh, taking in consideration that the footprint of the STEM school is, is pretty extensive. Um, so uh, that the uh, security guard had that uh, school to monitor. Security guard was armed. The identity of the younger. Um, yes, the school uh, security officer was armed, ma'am. Okay, right now we are identifying the individual as a female because that's where we're at. Um, we originally thought the uh, juvenile was a male by appearance. And, um, and like I said before, I um, did the press release very early on and before the detectives were able to get medical and uh, uh, detectives were able to speak to her and I was able to get the information, um, that information was corrected and I had already put out information that the individual was, um, was a male. Two more questions, please. Sorry, two the, more uh, questions. The injuries there, you mentioned, uh, we didn't get really the specifics, were they all shot or were there other injuries sustained, maybe trying to get away from the school? Okay, all nine of the students that were uh, uh, wounded at the school were shot at the school. One more question. Can you the school official the question. The school uh, decided that at this point right now, this is a law enforcement briefing uh, along with the governor, and they've asked not to uh, answer any questions right now. We're working closely with them on a number of things. One more right here. Right here. Uh, was there just that one security officer, or was there multiple at the school? Just one security officer at the school. Um, they have access to get into the school. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Um, what we're going to do is, like the sheriff stated before, we're going to put together a press release after 2 o'clock, and we hope to be able to release the identity um, of the victim. Uh, again, please follow us on Twitter for any updated information until then. Um, and I know you guys had some more questions and things like that, uh, but we need to wrap it up. And again, just follow us on Twitter and look for the press release um, after 2 o'clock. Thank you. Good words. All right, well, a 30-minute press conference there with some details we'll highlight very quickly, and then we will talk more about it throughout the morning. First of all, there are two suspects, one male. They did say yesterday a second male. They have now said this morning the second suspect is a juvenile and is a female. Both of those suspects were armed with handguns when they entered the school. Uh, they, at that point, opened fire. You heard the sheriff mention that we're going to learn in the days ahead that some of those students in the school acted as heroes. We also know uh, that three students this morning remain in critical condition. The deceased student, an 18-year-old, uh, his name likely to be released this afternoon. Also, no word on a motive. At least they are not giving us that yet. And uh, neither suspect was injured. So many more details throughout the morning. There are some highlights. We do need to get to your weather and traffic. Weather being a big issue today, uh, especially for the commute. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. When you look at the, the forecast, guys, we had uh, lightning and thunder around yesterday. That's not going to be the case today. We'll start out with a live camera. That is Denver right now. Temperatures are in the 40s. We've got some fog. We've also got some drizzle in a couple of places. And here's how that looks over the city of Denver on the Bacchus and Shanker camera. We've got a dense fog advisory of no surprise. We had this yesterday as well until 9 a.m. Denver in the front range. Looking ahead in time, though, we've got a winter weather advisory of for the foothills and parts of the Palmer Divide for tonight into tomorrow morning for snowfall. That's all above 6,000 feet. And then the Continental Divide has a winter storm warning. Here's how this shakes out today on the uh, a future cast. So the future radar shows rain here for the evening rush. So it's going to be wet 4 p.m. Snow in the mountains that begins to develop as the day goes on. Most of the accumulation will be tonight into tomorrow morning after the sun goes down. Here comes the changeover that happens 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight in the Denver metro area. And then it's all snow into the morning rush tomorrow. This is 5 a.m. For that reason, we have a pinpoint weather alert day for tomorrow because we are expecting some accumulation here across the front range. Here's today, though, my pinpoint to hour by hour. The temperatures go nowhere. In fact, they probably go down this afternoon with a cold front, and that's what initiates the changeover later tonight. We'll talk about accumulation numbers here coming up in just a few minutes. But Ken, right now, over to you for a look at the time saver traffic. Uh, Chris, we are kind of monitoring the delays along I-70 this morning. As you can see, there's backups from Central Park. Speeds along 25 are maintaining. It's a dreary day, but very few delays across the highways this morning. Jewel still looking at a closure. North Glen and Thornton speeds are holding if you're in the city itself. These are congestion related slowdowns off to the west. That big rock slide that had the Denver bound side of I-70 closed outside of Grand Junction that has since been reopened and the I-70 route from Grand Junction all the way back into the city looks good. Chris, Natalie, back to you.
Well, the STEM school in Highlands Ranch is closed today after that terrible scene that we've been telling you about yesterday. The sheriff mentioned moments ago that it will likely be an active crime scene for the next two days as the FBI joins them in their continuing investigation. We now know that the two suspects, one 18, one a juvenile, each entered the school with a pistol or a handgun and opened fire. We also know that the deceased student, 18 years old, died at the school his name likely to be released later on this afternoon. We are hearing a lot about possible heroics on behalf of other students who may have stepped in to try and save lives. We're also being told that the suspect, uh, at least one of them, was uh, restrained by a security officer at the school by the time deputies arrived. The students were bused then to a nearby to rec center. To be safe, you send your children to school, especially in STEM. With higher learning and excellence, it doesn't matter what kind of school it is. It doesn't matter what kind of socioeconomic situation you're put in. It can happen anywhere. As I said, the students were bused to a nearby rec center, all 1,800 of those kids. The long process then began of reuniting them with their parents. That was a point the sheriff made moments ago as well. 1,800 students on this campus, and of those 1,800, he said 600 of them were directly impacted by yesterday's shooting. All of those students get to be interviewed, mm. and as they continue to search for a motive, and that might have been the bigger point this morning, no motive or reason at this point being offered up by the sheriff in that press conference. The school, by the way, the STEM school will be closed through the end of the week. All other Douglas County schools will be open today. If you or anyone you know needs to talk to someone, sometimes you don't know right away, but later on you're having feelings and need to talk to someone, you can call the Colorado Crisis Services number. It's 844-493-TALK. You can also text the word TALK to 38255. 635 on your Wednesday morning. Our continuing live coverage continues right here on Channel 2 Daybreak. My daughter called me and she said, Mommy, there's gunshots at the school. I stopped what I was doing and I just ran into my car to get over here as quickly as I could. A horrible day for parents, students, staff, and people across Colorado after two shooters opened fire inside of classrooms at the STEM school in Highlands Ranch. Now just this hour, we got an update from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and this morning now investigators continue to comb through evidence at the STEM school in Highlands Ranch. It is an active crime scene and will remain one for at least two days. Our Emily Allen joins us live from outside of the school this morning with the latest. Emily. Nellie and Chris, we ended up learning a lot about that inside that press conference. And one of the things, too, is we have more insight now into exactly what it looks like inside of the school at this point. The Douglas County Sheriff says it is an extensive crime scene, and they've asked for the FBI's assistance just to try and sort through all of this that was inside. And they said it was a confusing situation, talking about the chaos as officers ran in. They were hearing those shots ring out inside of the STEM school. Officers were trying to find the shooters. While rescue students. Something interesting too that came out of that press conference is that by the time they encountered one of the suspects, they say the security guard here had already had that uh, suspect uh, contained and that the officers did not engage in any gunfire with either of the suspects. Some of those images from yesterday, just heartbreaking. Hearing those parents, what they experienced frantically trying to find their kids. We know at this point that at least two remain in the hospital in serious condition and we are told we are going to be finding out the name of the student that died around 2 p.m. today. Our hearts go out to that family that is just grieving right now. We did end up speaking with a neighbor. He ended up encountering one of the students that had been shot. Here's what he had to say when he found that student and another student and teacher outside at his mailbox. He was accompanied by another friend who was sitting next to him, applying pressure to his back where he was shot. At that moment in time, these two young men just became my, my kids. We brought him up the stairs here and then into the kitchen where five feet into the door, he just kind of sat down. Um, he was winded. 
Now, during that press conference, we also heard from District Attorney George Brockler, who had powerful words. He wanted to say, this is not who we are. We are a kind, compassionate, caring people. This is not who we are. Our school districts are safe. Our kids, my, he said, my kids are going to school today, and I think everyone else should be sending their kids to school to just reiterating that while we have these instances here in Colorado, stressing that we are a good community. Emily Allen, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Emily. And also word that there were no metal detectors at the school uh, this morning, and they continue to investigate. We'll have that 18-year-old uh, suspect in court this afternoon. For the latest details, as we learn them, stay tuned to Channel 2, and you can download our KWGN app where you can sign up for push alerts, and you can also visit the website for continuing updates throughout the morning. That's kwgn.com. Let's take a live look outside. We're going to look at Mile High. It is another dreary morning here in Colorado, and that's going to continue through the day with snow coming our way. Yeah, snow tonight, Natalie and Chris. So the rain that we're going to have is going to change to snow. Here are some of the things I'm looking at. Uh, that means snow for the morning rush tomorrow. When the sun goes down, that's the best chance for it to accumulate this time of the year. Heaviest snow is going to be above 6,000, so that's and the foothills and the Palmer Divide west and south of Denver. The chance of rain follow the yellow line here today it goes high for the evening rush stays high. What you see right there, that's all snow overnight into tomorrow morning's rush and then we start to dry out tomorrow afternoon. It's looking like we're going to wrap it up tomorrow and Friday is trending a bit drier on the pinpoint weather app. Loveland, I've got it on the hour by hour. Notice the chance of rain into the afternoon and then it goes over to snow late, but those percentages all go high this afternoon on the pinpoint future cast. The Mountains start to get snow midday into the afternoon with accumulation through tonight into tomorrow. Here comes the rain snow line. This is 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock tonight begins to move across and then it's all snow for that morning rush tomorrow and then it begins to taper, go back to rain into the afternoon. As far as accumulation goes, about an inch around here on the grass and trees will do it for the front range, but heavier west, heavier south as usual. And of course, the high mountains will get plenty. Zooming in on that, about an inch for Denver, two, three, four south and west. Conifer could get six. You can see the amounts up there over the top of the continental divide. Zooming in one more time, lots of ones for the metro, some twos on the south and west sides. The bigger numbers are up in the foothills. Pinpoint weather seven day forecast tomorrow is a pinpoint weather alert day because of the snow accumulation potential. Friday's turning drier. Saturday looks good. Mother's Day looks awesome. Ken Clark with a high of 70 degrees back in the 70s. All right, Chris, on this uh, Wednesday morning as you head out, uh, the freeways are pretty calm today. Uh, 225 and Parker Road. Here's east along I-70. This one route is dealing with delays. We do have calls out to try and figure out what's going on. If it's a late construction project or if there's an accident through this area so far, uh, nothing has been reported. Other than that, the drive today really does look pretty good. If you are making that run, the eastern side's approaching 30 minutes. Again, with the delays beginning as you get closer to Quebec, stretching down towards Peoria and Havana. The rest of the freeways continue to break loose. A look from our fine airport parking cam. If DIA is your destination, getting through those security wait lines, they're all right around 20 minutes or less. 644, we'll be right back. Six forty-seven on your Wednesday. Welcome back. As we continue to follow breaking news, one student killed, eight hurt, three remain in critical condition, all after a shooting at the STEM school in Highlands Ranch. Let's get back out to Jim Hooley with the very latest this morning, Jim. Natalie, good morning. You heard uh, Sheriff Tony Spurlock from Douglas County say just a little while ago, live here on Channel 2, he was talking about the investigation ongoing here now at STEM School. That is it right across the way. You can see some of the deputies and investigators out front. Uh, the sheriff said that those investigators will be here for at least the next couple of days. That includes his investigators from Douglas County and the FBI as well. They have to go through pretty much the entire school, combing that school for possible evidence to see what happened here to make sure they get everything lined up, get their ducks in order, so to speak, as to what happened uh, about the handguns. They say the suspects were armed with two handguns yesterday, at least two handguns. The question now is how did they get those handguns and who did the guns legally belong to? That will be a question for uh, the ATF and the ATF now is assisting with that investigation. We just talked to a sheriff's deputy here on the scene about the uh, cars that some of the students left here in the parking lot. There's a, a ton of cars over here right now in the parking lot next to the school. He told us that students can show up here at any time. Now now during the daytime and start to retrieve those cars at any time during the daytime. The only thing they will need is an ID, but that will be an ongoing process here as well as uh, things continue. The investigation continues here at STEM school in Highlands Ranch. In Highlands Ranch, I'm Jim Hooley, Channel 2 News. All right, Jim, thank you.
We're working to find out more on those suspects in the shootings. You heard the sheriff mention that 18-year-old and a juvenile, a male and a female, that 18-year-old will appear in court this afternoon. And Drew Engelbart is live this morning outside of one of the suspect's homes. Chris, as we've been talking about throughout the morning, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office did release the name of that 18-year-old male suspect. We have chosen not to release that information as well as a photo at the request of investigators. We're not releasing any of that information, but I can tell you that investigators were here overnight at the home of the suspect where he lives with his parents conducting a search warrant. Now, officers were told swarmed the neighborhood just very quickly after the shooting. Neighbors say they initially went inside the home but then came back out where they waited for several hours before they could get that search warrant. Uh, the sheriff's office tells us they're conducting multiple search warrants at the home, also to the alleged shooter's car. Now, investigators are also coming through the social media uh, of both of these suspects. Once again, one an 18-year-old male adult suspect, and then they have a juvenile female in custody. Her information has not been released and it won't be uh, considering that she is a juvenile now we do juvenile now we do know that that 18 year old male suspect is set to appear in court at 1 30 this afternoon at this point we do not know when the juvenile female will make her first court appearance reporting live in highlands ranch drew engelbart channel 2 news all right thank you drew meantime the channel 2 investigative team discovered a chilling message on the school's wikipedia page a little more than a week ago someone made an edit on the STEM School Highland Ranch Wiki page, there's a 2018 reference source which touts the school's achievements saying anti-suicide programs implemented help lower chances of suicide in school shootings. Then on April 29th, the edit and history log show that someone added the words, do these things work? We shall see in the notation area. The anonymous edit was made from a Comcast cable account using a computer IP address in Littleton, only a few miles away, from the STEM school and academy. If you're a parent, you're likely wondering, what do I tell my kids? How do we process what happened? Whether your kid might be a Doug Co student or not. Yeah, if you have younger kids, child psychologist Craig Nipper, uh, Nippenberg suggests explaining what happened like this. First of all, he says, say two students were unsafe and took guns to school and hurt other kids. But he also says, don't discuss the details about weapons or the intent of the shooters. You also want to focus on schools are safe. I mean, if you look at the research, national research, on where do get, kids get hurt the most, home, neighborhood, or school, uh, school's the least likely place they'll get injured. He also says even providing them an opportunity to share can help in ways you don't realize. Really tough for kids to process this. Sometimes in the moment I was reading a dad who posted on Twitter, my son seems fine even after what he witnessed. But then it was later that night, sometimes days later, that they start to process that information and they need that extra support. I know you were on hand, on location, even before first responders and the parents there, the worry on their face and uh, and the kids that you saw is something that stays with them for a long time. It absolutely is. And we worry about the kids as we should, but also the parents and the fears that they have going forward. So. We encourage you to reach out and get the support and the help you need because the lasting effects of walking up to a situation like that or even being in that neighborhood and having those fears after seeing what many people saw yesterday, hundreds of emergency vehicles and thousands of kids and parents who were walking out of that rec center with such emotion. Well, the other big story yesterday, it was an election day in Denver. We did receive new numbers and on the ballot, everything from the future of homeless rights to decriminalizing psychedelic mushrooms and, of course, uh, the Democratic mayoral candidate. There will be a runoff election next month. Mayor Hancock got 39% of the vote. Challenger Jamie Gillis got 26%. They will have a runoff because neither got to that 50% threshold and both candidates are scheduled to come on our show this morning in the next hour to talk about what comes next in this runoff race. Also, Initiative 300. That would have given homeless persons more rights to set up camp in Denver parks. That failed by a wide margin, voters rejecting it 82% to 17%. Initiative 301 would have decriminalized mushrooms in the city. This one is close, but it appears as it, it will fail by 51 to 48% margin. 6.54, and as we head into our Wednesday, by the time you come home from work tonight, it could be a very different story in the weather department. 
Chris Tomer, you always said Mother's Day is safe to plant, but yes. we're going to get another snow before then. You know, it's possible late next week we could have to deal with another cold storm system. It, nothing locked in stone, but we'll get through this one first. And look at the uh, the pinpoint weather forecast hour by hour today. Yeah, the temperature's all going down here. I mean, that's the effect of the cold front later today. And what it will do is give us rain early, change over to rain, snow, and then eventually all snow overnight tonight into the morning rush tomorrow. We're expecting some light accumulations. A bit more, though, as you go up in elevation. We'll look at those numbers uh, during the 6 a.m. hour. But uh, Ken Clark, right now, over to you, my friend, for a look at the time saver. Boy, and you can see that weather pushing in. One of the CDOT cameras just locked into the fog. This one uh, just a little bit out west along I-70 at Genesee. And uh, the wind also moving things around. But what you don't really see, well, I guess a little bit, is the roadway. So if you're in these areas, be sure to keep your headlights on. High beams, don't use those, just your regular lights. Uh, the drive along I-70 here in town still delayed. We have confirmed that it's a stall getting moved out of traffic east along I-70, but it jammed it up basically from Colorado. The map into downtown and around the city still quiet as far as problems go, but those eastern delays are there. At last check, it was at 30 minutes, so those drive times are holding. It's still slow, but slightly improving as traffic starts to break loose now that all lanes are open. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Ken. We continue to follow breaking news all morning long here on Daybreak. Uh, one student killed, eight others injured after two of their classmates opened fire inside that Highlands Ranch school. We have the story covered for you from all different angles. And we're in Douglas County. That press conference just finishing up a few minutes ago. Coming up here in the 7 o'clock hour, we'll hear from Sheriff Tony Spurlock as well as from the DA and the governor here of Colorado calling for the community to come together after the latest developments here from the shooting.